the way we test autonomy risks is the model, the, the AI model's ability to do aspects of AI research itself, uh, which when the model, when the AI models can do AI research, they become kind of truly, truly autonomous. Uh, and that, you know, that threshold is important for a bunch of other ways. And, and so what do we then do with these tasks? The RSP basically develops what we've called an if-then structure, which is if the models pass a certain capability, then we impose a certain set of safety and security requirements on them. So today's models are what's called ASL2. Models that were A ASL1 is for systems that manifestly don't pose any risk of autonomy or misuse. So for example, a chess playing bot, Deep Blue, would be ASL1. It's just manifestly the case that you can't use Deep Blue for anything other than chess. It was just designed for chess. No one's going to use it to like, you know, to conduct a masterful cyber attack or to, you know, run wild and take over the world. ASL2 is today's AI systems where we've measured them and we think these systems are simply not smart enough to, uh, to you know, autonomously self-replicate or conduct a bunch of tasks uh, and also not smart enough to provide meaningful information about CBRN risks and how to build CBRN weapons above and beyond what can be known from looking at Google. Uh, in fact, sometimes they do provide information, but but not above and beyond a search engine, but not in a way that can be stitched together, um, not not in a way that kind of end to end is dangerous enough. So ASL three is going to be the point at which uh, the models are helpful enough to enhance the capabilities of non state actors. Right, state actors can already do a lot a lot of unfortunately to a high level of proficiency a lot of these very dangerous and destructive things the difference is that non state non state actors are not capable of it and so when we get to ASL3 we'll take special security precautions designed to be sufficient to prevent theft of the model by non state actors and misuse of the model as it's deployed uh we'll have to have enhanced filters targeted at these particular areas. Cyber, bio, nuclear. Cyber, bio, nuclear, and model autonomy, which is less a misuse risk and more risk of the model doing bad things itself. ASL4, getting to the point where these models could, could enhance the capability of a, of, a, of a already knowledgeable state actor and or become the, you know, the main source of such a risk. Like if you wanted to engage in such a risk, the main way you would do it is through a model. And then I think ASL4 on the autonomy side, it's, it's some, some, some amount of acceleration in AI research capabilities with an, with an AI model. And then ASL5 is where we would get to the models that are, you know, that are, that are kind of, that are kind of, you know, truly capable, that it could exceed humanity in their ability to do, to do any of these tasks. And so the, 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 point of the if then structure commitment is is basically to say look I, I don't know i've been i've been working with these models for many years and i've been worried about risk for many years it's actually kind of dangerous to cry wolf it's actually kind of dangerous to say this that you know this this model is this model is risky and you know pe people look at it and they say this is manifestly not dangerous again it's 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 the the delicacy of the risk isn't here today, but it's coming at us fast. How do you deal with that? It's it's really vexing to a risk planner to deal with it. And so this if-then structure basically says, look, we don't want to antagonize a bunch of people. We don't want to harm our own, you know, our, our, our kind of own ability to have a place in the conversation by imposing these, these very onerous burdens on models that are not dangerous today. So the if-then, the trigger commitment it's basically a way to deal with this. It says you clamp down hard when you can show that the model is dangerous. And of course, what has to come with that is, you know, enough of a buffer threshold that, you, that, you know, you can, you can, uh, you, you know, you're, 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 you're not at high risk of kind of missing the danger. It's not a perfect framework. We've had to change it every, every, uh, you know, we came out with a new one just a few weeks ago and probably, probably going forward, we might release new ones multiple times a year because it's it's hard to get these policies right, like technically, organizationally, from a research perspective. But that is the proposal. If then commitments and triggers in order to minimize burdens and false alarms now, but really react appropriately when the dangers are here.